hey there. You probably already figured what we're going to talk about today, and that is caffeine, particularly coffee, and diabetes. So, I mean, who doesn't love coffee? We run on coffee. You're probably just as confused as I am. Do we drink coffee? Do we not drink coffee? There's a lot of data that says drinking coffee helps prevent type 2 diabetes, but then we know that it spikes blood sugar levels, so what is the real deal, guys? Well, today, guys, on The Voice of Diabetes, I'm going to talk about caffeine, particularly coffee, and if diabetics can drink coffee and what does it do to your blood sugars so make sure you guys are tuning in my name is diana i want to welcome you to the voice of diabetes if you are new consider subscribing and turning on your notification so you don't miss any videos that i upload here on a weekly basis so let's get started guys whether it's coffee or tea most of us consume caffeine on a regular basis for most of us, we know that caffeine can be harmless. I mean, what's a tea or a cup of coffee going to do for you, right? It just keeps us awake. It keeps us moving. But we know that with diabetes, it can actually complicate things. It can make managing diabetes much more difficult. And we, I know this and I see this on a regular basis in my office with a continuous glucose monitor such as a Dexcom and a Freestyle Libre. I can see exactly what coffee does for my patients and how high it can actually bring blood sugar levels. Caffeine has been around for a long time, therefore there's been a lot of studies done uh, regarding caffeine and type 2 diabetes. One study looked at people with type 2 diabetes who took a 250 milligram caffeine pill at breakfast and another one at lunchtime. That's about the same as drinking two cups of coffee with each meal their blood sugars were 8% higher on the days that they actually consumed the caffeine pill than on the days that they did not consume the caffeine pill. What does that mean? Well, that means one thing. We know that caffeine definitely rises blood sugar levels, and therefore this is why people who consume uh, coffee or, or caffeinated tea will see higher blood sugar levels. They also saw that those patients that consumed caffeine actually had higher blood sugar levels after they ate. So on the days that those patients consumed the caffeine, their blood sugar levels were higher, as I mentioned earlier, but they also had higher blood sugar levels after the aid. What do you mean? The coffee lasts in your system all day long? Well, kinda. Caffeine actually affects how our body responds to insulin. Therefore, there are certain triggers that, that caffeine causes that actually make us more insulin resistant. So throughout the day, of course, you're gonna have higher blood sugar levels not only after you've had the coffee, but also throughout the day because your body is, is a little bit more resistant since you've had caffeine in your system. Caffeine may also lower your insulin sensitivity, which means you're not gonna respond as well to insulin as you would without the caffeine on board. Um, so therefore, again, making you more insulin resistant and making you less insulin sensitive. I don't think I've convinced you just yet on how caffeine can actually cause blood sugar levels. So let's get a little bit scientific and I'm going to simplify this very well for you so you can kind of understand what is going on. When we consume ca caffeine, like coffee, it actually rises certain levels in our bloodstream. It activates a stress hormone called epinephrine also known as your adrenaline. We know that epinephrine affects in the way your, your body processes sugar, and it also may affect in how much your, your body produces insulin. So not only are you not utilizing the insulin as well, but it's actually causing sugar levels to be uh, released, so therefore causing higher blood sugar levels in the bloodstream. Additionally, it actually blocks a protein called adenosine. Adenosine controls how your cells respond to insulin. So if it makes them less sensitive and less responsive to insulin, then obviously that's going to cause higher blood sugar levels. Overconsumption of caffeine and coffee can make you not sleep as well because it makes us more alert and more awake. So if you're not getting enough sleep and you're having a difficulty sleeping, of course this will have an impact on your blood sugar levels as you will be more insulin resistant overall and lack of sleep will make your body more stressed and therefore causes higher blood sugar levels. How much caffeine can I have and can I have caffeine at all? Well, it only takes about 200 milligrams of caffeine to actually have an impact on your blood sugar. What does that mean? That means about one to two cups of brewed coffee or three to four cups of black tea 
to actually have an impact on your blood sugar levels. Very often I have patients and I can upload their continuous glucose monitors and I can see that coffee has raised up their blood sugars minimally of 50 points, sometimes even 100 plus, depending on how insulin resistant my patients are. So if the patient is on insulin, of course, I have them take some mealtime insulin like Humalog, Novolog, Lumjav, Epidra, Fiasp, or any of those before they actually have coffee so that they don't have such a spike in their blood sugar after they have their morning coffee. And if I have patients on sulfonylureas, like glipizide, glimepiride, then normally I will have the patients take, the med take that before they actually have their morning coffee. There is a lot of data that support that, you know, coffee has a lot of antioxidants, which actually reduces inflammation, in turn helps us prevent uh, type 2 diabetes and certain cancers. However, guys, the point is we want to be careful with how much caffeine we consume. We want to be educated and you kind of want to learn what caffeine does for you. We all respond to caffeine differently. What a cup of coffee may do for my blood sugar may be very different from what a cup of coffee may do for your blood sugars. So you want to monitor your blood sugar levels. And of course, we know that continuous glucose monitors like Dexcom and Freestyle Libre make this very easy now because we can just scan or we can look at our phone and see what caffeine does for you and we can take the proper precautions or the proper medications that we need before we actually have coffee to prevent a high blood sugar. And moderation, guys, is key. I normally recommend one cup of coffee a day for my patients if they must have coffee and if they are coffee lovers. Um, of course, we wanna live and we wanna still enjoy things like the rest of the world does. So um, eliminating everything that raises your blood sugar sometimes is not realistic. And I always try to keep things straight and realistic for patients because we don't want to give the tell the patient you can't have coffee you can't have bread you can't have fruits you can't have I mean what can they have at that point right so we want to be realistic but uh, moderation is key and taking the proper precautions is key so if you want to enjoy a cup of coffee absolutely do so uh, but be smart about it and make sure that you are you are realizing what caffeine how you respond to caffeine and if you need to take insulin for it then go ahead so that you prevent high blood sugars and you can enjoy your coffee in peace thanks for tuning in and i will see you on the next video